my old buggy, which is a... <laughs> I don't know, it's still, the jury's still out right now to see which buggy we're going to keep. This is a 2022 Can-Am Maverick X3 XRC. This girl is a beast. I've been uh, having a lot of fun with this thing over the last couple of years. There's lots of content on the channel with this buggy. And uh, we're going to just do a little comparison today. As you know, it is a uh, 200 horsepower. It's got about 16, 17 inches of clearance, 24 inches of wheel travel, suspension, front and rear. Runs on 32 inch tires. Boy, Mike did a real nice job cleaning this thing up. Can I drive good, eh? This is Mike. <laughs> He's my partner in crime here. We both have this. Uh, this I call it a disease. Man. A disease. It's it. a disease. Yeah. Yeah. We uh, we both enjoy our toys, and spend we're gonna. Money. Yeah, and and spend each other's money, which is a common theme I think amongst friends. Yeah. So today we're so gonna. Why don't you turn the camera on yourself and show them how much you spent on your outfit today? Oh yeah, this is here. <laughs> this is my outfit. This is what I came up with. I think this is good. Yeah. I think that matches. That oh, more so matches the uh, the other buggy. The other buggy. Yeah. Let's go over and, and look at the other buggy. Right here. You want to unload this here first? This one, Let's yeah. see if Mike can get it off the trailer without falling off the ramps here. Good old snowmobile trailer does the trick. This is a 72 inch wide model. Perfect. That's it. Got a beautiful day here get some video that's the new buggy over there that's a 2023 can-am defender limited and this is what we're gonna compare we're gonna compare these two so they're completely different riding styles as you can see one has a full cab it has heat it has air conditioning power windows it uh, comes factory with a winch it has I'm not a hundred percent sure you'll have to correct me if I'm wrong I believe it's about nine or ten inches of travel they're uh, non rebuildable shocks you can see the uh, air conditioning condenser lines going into the cab and the rads enclosed pretty good there he is can am Defender Limited. I put some mirrors on it because they don't come with side mirrors. It comes with a rear view mirror, which is quite big rear view mirror. And uh, I also put this box in the back here to store barbecues and drinks and what have you in the back. It's got a tailgate. It'll hold 250 pounds, so if you and your buddy are under 250, you can sit on there. It's a nice looking unit. Got a couple scratches on it from trying it out already. Tinted the windows. And what else we do? Oh, we put these on here. These are fender extensions just to try and keep some of the mud off the side of it. We did the same thing over here with the X3. These are mud busters. They uh, they work really good. They they collapse if you get into a tight spot and then just spring back pretty much to the same position they are in. This one here is a little bit tweaked, but it gets the job done. 
So where we are riding here today, it's uh, 11,000 acres of trails. It's a beautiful, beautiful setting called the Ganaraska Forest. But it's famous for being super dusty when it's dry. So uh, riding in the Can-Am, you'll be fine with the dust because you have a cab enclosure. However, this buggy, you're gonna eat it. So this is what I came up with for a solution to solve the dust problem, which is a climb helmet with a air puffer system by Rugged Radios up in the roof there. And then you have, yeah, there's a variable, variable switch there. It has dual ports, one for the passenger and one for the driver. Little skirt here to keep the dust. Uh, yeah, little skirt to keep the dust from. You know, worth its weight in gold, eh, Brandon? Absolutely. Worth its weight in gold. And then this is a Senna, I think it's a S50, which is a communication device as well as it plays music, Bluetooth to your phone, and takes a little bit of setting up to get it in the helmet, but it works phenomenal. The battery life on it is incredible. So we put mirrors on this. We put uh, a light bar by. Baja design that light bar is worth its weight in gold it's a phenomenal light the um, the other accessory that I put on the back of this I don't go usually too crazy on accessories is the uh, the box in the back that you can store some stuff in the back there and I put that glove box thing on the top there to store some extra goodies and some door pocket uh, storage solutions but it's a it's a beast this thing it uh, hauls the mail pretty good compared to the defender the defenders it's uh i think it makes about 80 between 80 and 90 horsepower and it's uh it's more or less meant for just touring around not doing crazy aggressive speeds or or bumps or terrain whereas the x3 will do all of that it'll do speed it'll do bumps and pretty much you can ride in whatever you throw at it I would say Brandon some of the most critical stuff we're looking at here probably is the double of the shock capacity yeah the shock you can see the travel of the shock it's I believe it's 24 inches of travel you can see the the shock there and By the, shock therapy springs right yeah and I put actually yeah I put shock therapy springs on it too there's a ton of travel on this thing and ground clearance too. The, uh, the back, they're all dual rate springs. It works phenomenal. It works really, really well. I just thought I would change it up though and, and try something a little bit, a little bit different. Well, a lot of a bit different. Well, look at these, look at these backs. Is, Get a shot which of is this. this. Look at this size of this reservoir. Oh yeah. And their shock. Yeah, which is incredible. That's got to be what? That's two and a half feet, three feet long. Yeah, and get a picture of those back shocks on that. Uh, and then you go over to this. Looks like it came off of a lawn tractor. Those are really the same ones on the back of your snowmobile, I think. <laughs> or maybe, yeah, snowmobile <laughs> or your old BMX shock bike, the one that had the gas tank on it. With remember the big that? Banana seat. The oh big yeah, with banana, the plastic gas the plastic tank. Gas tank. Yep. Yep. Yeah, that's yep. probably what these came off of. I, like, I don't see, do you know anything on the name brand of those, Brandon? I think they're just... ZF is what is on them. Which is what? I don't know. We're not sure. Um, zebra, zebra Fun. I got them cranked up so I got the best ground clearance you can see there. So yeah, that's uh, the Defender. The coolest thing about this is is the cab. Inside the cab, there's... There's a ton of space. Here, I'll give you the give you the. Uh, All right, jump in there, buddy. Thing I'll give you the camera. We're gonna have a little uh, yeah. in buggy commentary by the Beach Boys here. <laughs> <laughs> we got some GoPro set up here to capture some excitement. Some top shelf uh, yeah. Ram mounts. Ram mounts. So cool. Coolest function about this is. Uh, is the simple size inside the the cab it's it's massive lots of lots of room to move around storage this comes factory with storage put a bunch of stuff in there 
and the seat just pops up. And then uh, the passenger seat, or the middle seat, it, it folds up too. Lots of storage under there. Driver seat's fixed. It doesn't flip up, but it does slide back and forth. The, um, and then that, that's another advantage is what you got in your hand there, right, Brandon? Your, your helmet. Your helmet, yeah. You need to wear your helmet. Well, and your, I mean, advantage, you're dust-free. Oh, dust-free. Right? You can you're... wear an open face, like, like a bucket-style helmet instead of wearing that full face helmet the climb one with what if we just put some newspaper in your uh in my in your mexican hat and then mexican pulled the string hat. tight we can try that <laughs> it has uh heat vents there's uh four of them up top here on the on the dash yeah going around the other side there mikey I got my phone plugged in here there's usb ports i got a whole bunch of junk in there though you're not gonna be able to see it there's two usb ports in there they're lit up at nighttime so you can see where they are and then you have your uh, command center here to get you through your trip the different menus of drive modes and uh, your locking rear differential the front diff and this is a visca lock so it doesn't it's not a true locker what's it, your reviews from that from going to race place Brandon um it was okay like it, 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 I, I did get into a hole there that I didn't want to get into and I got out but um, I think that the X3 would have had an easier job of getting out of there. What was the cost? Any parts or? No, I didn't break any no? parts. All right. No well. parts. Oh, I did back into a tree and then smashed a little uh, That's not the tiny reflector. Fault. $15 worth to replace that. Okay. So in the winter time, when when it's cold, there's heat vents here for defrost, so you can open and close them. So you don't select from. This is your air conditioning and your heat control here, and you 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 roll through. Yes. Turn it on there. So right now I think I have it set on auto. So you just put it to the temperature that you want it to and it will either bring on the heat or it will bring on the air conditioning to reach that temperature. You hit the button once and so that tells you on auto, you can flip it, turn it, and then it goes to air conditioning, turn it one more time and you got your heat. Hit the button again and it will give you fan speed, medium, high, and then low. Hit it again you can start moving the temperature around and stuff. So I'm gonna to try today by just putting it on auto 
Oops. Auto, just leave it for a minute. It's a couple of seconds and then it will just go into auto. So it will do what it needs to do. Bring the fan speed on low or bring it on high to get it to that temperature that you want. So I'm gonna leave it at 68. Actually, let's do 69 because we all know what that's all about. There you go. <laughs> Tilt steering, right, Brandon? Yeah. Got Tilt it. steering, same dash as the X3 or very similar? Same, yeah, same dash as, okay. the, as the X3. You might have to back up a bit because it might, because I think it's zoomed in pretty good. Yeah, your tilt steering is here. You've got tilt steering. You got your winch in and out, and your headlights are here. Heat vent there. There's a little pocket here to put some change or spark plugs. You probably won't need any spark plugs though. We're hoping not. Yeah. How many kilometers you got on this one? There's 200 kilometers. 200 kilometers right now. Yeah. And, and how many cans of tire foam? Uh, zero so far. This is a neat feature too. So say you're sitting around with your buddies and you stop and it's uh, it's raining. You can sit inside the cab here while all your buddies get soaked and open that up and you can chit chat with them. Or if you're hunting, you can sit in here with your gun and out the windshield and fire. <laughs> Shoot pop cans or deers or bears or whatever you're shooting at. And then there's another setting where you can just have it open just um, about four four inches or so to ventilate, which is nice. There's a there's a wiper on there with a washer. The washer washer jets right on the wiper. There's no variable speed, it's either on or it's off. There's a there's a stereo in here. It's um, it's not uh, super loud or anything, but it will Bluetooth itself to your phone. For a six inch. Yeah, it's six inch. And the remind me, Brandon, the roof and the doors on this are basically fixed pieces. It's not like there's yeah. a lower model that doesn't ha that's not fixed. Am I wrong? Yeah, the I'm not sure what model that is. But yeah, you're right, they have other, the same model, but it, it doesn't have the power windows, it doesn't have the windshield, and it doesn't have the heat and air conditioning. I think it's just a regular Defender. Yep, and then one thing, uh, maybe you forgot, Brandon, I remember when you were telling me about it, is just by looking at it, you would think you can pull up to the bar here, or wherever you're going, your buddy's cottage, and you could leave your wallet and your phone in there and lock the door, but unfortunately it doesn't oh, even have no, a door lock, there's no right? Lock. There's no lock. There's no lock. No it kind of gives you that appearance, right? You kind of remind yourself of uh, like a mini truck or a car or something like that where you, you think you could lock it, but this, no, you don't have a lock. There's no locks. The vent does dump though, which is kind of cool. You can, uh, it's kind of weighted so it wants, or it's designed so that when there's a bunch of weight in there and you pull up on this, it'll just, it'll just automatically dump. So when there's nothing in it, you just got to push down on it a little bit. By a lever on your driver's side or both sides? Both sides. Both sides. There's a lever. And let's then, get into the business compartment here. Yeah, that's where the. Uh, I'll go around here and you point out the uh, the internal workings here. Well, there's the air conditioning compressor, the thing with the black cover on it there. So mm -hmm. it's up fairly high. Mm -hmm. You've got your windshield washer fluid bottle here. You got your uh, coolant overflow there. Mm -hmm. Is this, this part here, Brent, is that the flux capacitor? Yes, the flux, flux capacitor. capacitor. Keep, keep going. Keep your eye on that sucker because sometimes they go on you and you got to make sure you got a spare flux capacitor on you because if you don't, you you might end up in a different... You time. might back in 1985. 1985, yeah. Which is, I'd be okay with that because you'd be okay, I, you would fit right I in. would have some hair then and I wouldn't be as fat. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, this is your uh, exhaust for the clutch. So it's exhaling there right onto the cool the exhaust a little bit and it sucks itself in here right about belly. So while we're on that note, Brandon, what's the depth that we're able to take this in? It's about right, about, we're going to be right there, right? Right about there. Yep. So that's its whole, this thing pops out too to, to clean it. And yep. It can pop out, it's just a screen. So what is that, 36 inches or 24, that's, that's 30, 36 maybe? The way I look at it is, it is pretty much if you're getting to the bottom of your seat yeah here with water 
you're, you're, you're in you're trouble. You're close to being in trouble. Yeah. If you got water in that far. Yeah. So that, that comes to, the bottom of the seat comes to about here. Yeah. So whatever that is there. Yeah, that's what we want to. Just a little below. I that. would say measure with your legs, but uh, it'd be a few of those. <laughs> And if even if you did go above that, uh, you really don't want to because you're, you're into some carpet and yeah. obviously you got nice upholstery and stuff in here. It's like like you said, it's not really your uh, boondocker. Yeah, it's not meant to it, go super super mudding. Although you can you can you can get it above the tire, that would be okay. Yeah, which which uh, what's that in your experience? That's probably ninety nine percent of the time. Uh, you know, you would have like there's a chicken root available that you're yeah, not going to submerge the buggy, right? Yeah. I haven't. Um, I haven't spent a ton of time in it. I did take it to uh, Minden Off Road Park last weekend for its maiden voyage, and it did everything that the X3 does. And I was very happy with it to be enclosed and not be exposed to the elements. There's no dust or anything there. It did get cold at night. We did some riding at night where I had the heater on inside and that was that was quite nice to have the heat inside. It um, it did, uh, I had two people in here and we came upon a, a, a tricky rock section. I wasn't going really all that fast and it bent the inner tie rod link. Well, not the inner tie rod, but there's an inner and there's an outer tie rod and there's a tube, aluminum tube that goes between them and yep. it bent that. So it, I wasn't too happy about that, but that uh, was probably partially my mistake. Are we talking right here? Yep, yep, that so tube right there. Yep, that's so aluminum? It, yeah, that's aluminum. So yep. it threads itself in here, yep. and then it threads itself in on Yep, with inner. opposite threads. Yep, and then this bent. So you've already replaced that? Replaced that. Yep. And have you had the winch out yet? I haven't had the winch out. No, no. you still got metal. You still got steel cable on there. That's uh, whatever. And what about the tires? The tires are pretty good. Mm -hmm. I haven't had any issues with the tires. I th I think like uh, oh there you go ducks. <laughs> Open the windshield. Oh, yeah. I guess that's a mean looking buggy. It's really hard yeah. to get around that, right? It's a good looking machine. Yeah, it's completely different function than the X3, but yeah. The way I see it, it's uh, it's it's just a little bit more creature comfort. So I'm getting older now, and maybe this will be the the ticket. We don't know. You can carry a barbecue in there. You can. Where'd you get the barbecue from? Oh, I got that from some uh, some guy, some dude, real nice guy. Can't remember his name. Oh, it's Mike. <laughs> Thanks for the barbecue, Mike. You know who has it now? Did you? Is Mike the other Mike's? Oh, the other Mike's because got it. When this bent the tire, oh, you threw it. All the lunch stuff with me. I had the barbecue. I had the sausage. You were the lunch guy. I had the ketchup, the mustard. I had the napkins, everything, the gray poupon, and we had to take this buggy back to Ray's place where we were staying, leave this here, and then I jumped in with Mike and we carried on our ride. And we had to take all of the stuff that was in there, all of the the lunch items, and spread them amongst other buggies that were already all packed up for the trip. So. The barbecue is with Mike right now, the other Mike, so I gotta get that back from him and my barbecue tongs. I got some nice barbecue tongs. So I gotta get that back. I put these mirrors on too. These are aftermarket. Oh, you put those on? Yeah, these were... Um, Did it not have mirrors on there, Bannon? No. It had no mirrors? No mirrors. Oh, I remember you said that when we drove it the first time. Yeah, there's no mirrors. You were kinda uh, put off a little bit, not put off a little bit, but you found it a little bit strange that there was no, no side not. mirrors. Yeah. And it does the really weird thing inside, and I think it's because all of the glass in it is flat, flat glass. There's yes, no contour it's not. There's not anything. contoured at all. So it creates a fishbowl effect inside the buggy at nighttime and sometimes during the day. The tint didn't help it. I don't know whether the tint harmed it. It might have or amplified it. But that one time when we were down at the boat launch there, and we saw the boat on our right hand side, yeah. it was a full blown. A uh, pontoon boat tied up to a dock and you look at it you can plain as day see it outside the passenger side window and then you look over to the driver's side window and that exact same boat is a hologram of it right there and it looked real as the one out the passenger it's i don't know what it is or why it does that so just so you clarify ben you call it fishbowl mm -hmm. it's the reflection like the internal reflecting 
yeah. uh, of the windows in there. Like like you're saying, the one time when we pulled out onto the road, mm -hmm. and I thought the car was coming uh, northbound. Yeah. Luckily, you saw it coming southbound. It was coming yeah. Southbound. And but honestly, I thought the car was coming northbound, and that's from the reflections of the windows. Yeah. It does a weird hologram thing going on in there. Even when you when you look out the back window in your rear view mirror, it looks like there's a reverse light on and, and you can see everything behind you. But what it actually is, is a reflection of what's going on through the front window. Somehow, yep. I don't know why it does it or how it does it, yep. but I believe it's something to do with the way that the glass is. It's so square. Yeah, and on wow. the X3 we get none of that reflective. Yeah, the X3. No reflective issues no on this one. Issues no reflective whatsoever. issues. The, the, the theory that I ran with for the longest time, because I've had these side by side since 2008, was uh, and and great great fun. These things is uh, I've had the windshields, and I've had the half windshields and all that kind of stuff. I never did have heat or defrost, so it was always fogging up. The inside of the window would fog up on a windshield. So with this. That's why you, all you got to worry about keeping clear as far as the windshield goes is your visor and that's all you got to keep clear. So if you're zipping down the trail and you go through a big mud puddle and you get mud, you just wipe it off. Whereas with that, you can use the wiper and the squirter and everything. And one, one more piece with that helmet, Brandon, as uh, I'm wearing prescription glasses and you sometimes do as well, I find that that helps amazing like it's it, you're not getting any fogging issues yeah, the where airflow. yeah where you're wearing a couple of different uh lenses you're not getting the fogging issues same with the windshield remind me mm -hmm. sometimes we rode um open style buggies like this but we would have a, pl a plexiglass or a plastic windshield and we would get fogging yeah and it fogs yep. up this buggy is inherent for throwing when you go through water a puddle or something like that and, and if you're going any faster than about 12 to 15 miles an hour you're gonna eat it it just it it splashes up it goes forward and then you're you drive right into it so you're you're wearing it instantly i don't know whether it's these tires or it's just the design of the buggy even these don't do anything for, for the going through a puddle water goes up and then you drive into it and you get soaked because you got these big tires straight into the puddle making the splash it's coming up and going straight to the windshield yeah. not necessarily flying off the back of the tire is not no. kind of the problem no and this doesn't do any of that stuff because the tires the tires up underneath the body work and it doesn't uh it doesn't come up on the windshield unless you hit a puddle really hard it's not coming up and it's a deep puddle it's not going to hit the windshield yep and these little uh fender extensions do a decent job of keeping the mud off of the side of the buggy is that BRP stuff, Brandon? This is, yeah, BRP, right out of the catalog. I think they're like 300 bucks, 280 bucks, something like that. These were off of Amazon. These are for a Jeep YJ or something like really? that. Really? Yeah, I seen another guy, he had a review and they're like 80 bucks. Whereas the BRP ones, the proper ones, they're $300. And is the base on that metal, Brandon? Yeah. The base is metal? Yeah. And it bolted right up? Bolts right up. It really? Collapse, it'll, it'll collapse. Yep. Collapse. Yep. It almost smashes itself. <laughs> That's not good. Review over. Yeah. Smash. Yeah, you gotta be. Actually, it might be all right. Yeah. It kind of flops out of the way. Oh, that's perfect. Yeah. yeah. And then if you, like, where I've driven Brandon's X3, and when you're bolted into the four point harness, and you're kind of riding a boat, and you you catch some debris or something, and you throw a mirror off by a little bit. It's basically done until you stop again. Where here you can roll the window down, yeah, correct your mirror, off. right? Yeah. Yep. At that least the driver's side one, you can do that. And about the, like the visibility in these, Brandon, from from your your knowledge and from my experience as well, is the ba the reversing is just atrocious. Yeah. yeah this is one, terrible. You can't even see what you're what you're backing when you're backing up. You can't see really anything behind you other than what you can spot in your side mirrors if they're not full of mud. Then you just kind of back up slow until you bump into something and then you try and figure it out or hopefully your buddy's back there that can say, oh, there's a big tree back there. But you can't see behind like your rear view mirror. You can see over the box and you can kind of see what's back there. Yep. Where and that's, this one's, this one's sprung so high in the back. It keeps reminding me of like a grasshopper. And you can imagine backing up with that. You just can't see anything. No. And then here. This one here, you can, you can see out the back, but then again, it also depends upon where the light is, is coming into play. It's a little bit, it, it 
looks like it would be straightforward and simple. You're looking out the back there to, to see what's behind you. The rear view mirror is huge and it's a big uh, concave mirror or convex mirror. So it kind of shows you your, a little bit of your blind spots and, and everything in behind you. It does show all of that. And then the other side mirrors will, will look after what's directly beside you over here, which that other mirror you won't be able to see. And this one, you know, you can imagine the perspective of driving this where your wheels are in line with the bodywork. Yeah. It's a, it's a little bit more predictable when you're backing up or even driving forward. Maybe not as much. I pro you probably have better backing up. As going forward, you kind of lose the wheels. Where on this one, going forward, you can basically see the wheels. Coming back, the wheels are kind of hanging outside of the bodywork and maybe you cause a little bit of problems there. Well, the wheel, the good thing about the, this one, having the wheels hang out. Is you can see them. Is, is there, well, you can't see them from inside the cab. You don't know where they are. You get a feel for where they are. Right, but right. This thing will go, it's, it's deceiving. It's 72 inches wide. But once in a while, you'll get into a section where the, the trees are tight. And yep. it doesn't look like you're getting through there. So this thing will go, it will squish the suspension in, go between the trees. And then it, the suspension just pops right back out. And you're not really getting into much of the bodywork. If it does get into this bodywork, this bodywork will collapse. I remember that, Brandon, because when you got this, this was top dog. You know, probably still is very top of the food chain. But uh, at 72 inches wide, I remember the first time uh, being out with it, we were thinking, you're crazy. That thing's too wide for, yeah. you know, for, especially for riding what we're used to here. Because we're, we're rubbing trees going through with, what, 64-inch bikes. 64. That's what this is, 64. Yeah. And this one's 72. And 72. And, and I was thinking, he's crazy. He's not going to get through with this because some of the stuff is so tight, even after reverse, to correct it. And, and he was getting through with it. So, yeah. I mean, that that there it is right there. If you bump a tire against one tree, you can kind of squish the bike and off you go. And I had a toy hauler where the footprint where this lived in the toy hauler was narrower than 72 inches not by a lot i think i had about three inches maybe four inches that this thing was too wide so what i did was i jacked up the the buggy so that the suspension would hang down and then i would tie the two control arms so picture the, the control arms are sitting like that you jack you jack the buggy kind of bringing the, the wings in. in yeah bring the wings in and then grab it with a ratchet strap, a good ratchet strap, not a little one inch ratchet strap, a good, you know, two and a half, three inch ratchet strap because the little one inch one will snap. So when the, when the, when the suspension is normally sitting like that and then you jack it up from the middle, the suspension goes down and the tires actually come in, grab it with your ratchet strap from both control arms and then you cinch it. So now it's, it's stuck like this, like kind of like a scared cat. It's like that. But then the trade off of that is it gains height now. Now the buggy's taller, it's probably two or three inches taller than it was before, and I would do the same thing with the back. And then for it to come in underneath, the, it had a happy jack system in the back of the toy hauler, your beds. You had to watch that, and I gouged the roof one time because I wasn't paying attention. But for the, for make it skinnier. probably for most, I mean, I mean, and, and you made it work, Brandon, but probably for most people, they're not putting 72 inch bikes in the toy hauler. Most of them are probably a 50, 64 at max, but I mean, you squeezed in a 72 and it happened, right? Yeah, 72 works. Yeah. She went in there. Yep.